And are you able, as WW teaches, to treat yourself with compassion? Having reverence for yourself is what I mean when I say, be the love you need. And that's a beautiful word. Think about that for a moment, that word reverence. Do you have reverence? Do you revere yourself? It's a, it's a powerful thing to have reverence for yourself. I want to introduce now Dr. Shafali. Now, if you don't know who she is, oh my goodness. She's a clinical psychologist, the author of a trailblazing new book coming soon called A Radical Awakening. I have read it. I'm telling you, you should pre-order it now if you want a radical awakening, a shakeup in your life. Her earlier book though, let me just tell you, The Conscious Parent changed the way I think about parenting forever. I think I probably have, I counted the other day because I just gave a book to someone else, 21 copies on, in, in my personal private library because anytime anybody in the world hints that they might be pregnant, I send them a copy of The Conscious Parent. So best book ever in all the years I've ever been talking to experts on television, which is since 19 aught something. Um, Dr. Shafali's book on conscious parenting is the best I've ever read. Hi, Dr. Shafali. Hello, Oprah. Thank you for having me here today. Great to see you. So will you please share with us the radical awakening of what it means to be the love you need? What does that mean to you? It's so powerful. You know, this conversation around being the love you need is one of the most profound and pivotal conversations we can have. So I'm so glad to be part of it. You know, as a clinical psychologist, I have observed that not being this love is the cause, the ultimate cause of our human suffering. Across the board, as a psychologist, I have observed family after family that there is one common human denominator, and that is, the childhood abduction of our authentic self. You know, as children, we were raised to be puppets and minions and soldiers in our parents' and culture's army to fit into the boxes that they imposed on us. And because of this, we gave up our authentic self. We suppressed our truth. We became anything they wanted us to be. Oh, you want me to be a pleaser? Okay. You want me to be a comedian? Okay. You want me to never show my feelings? Okay. You want me to control and micromanage and overachieve and over uh, produce? Okay. And so we split off from this inner truth, this inner knowing, this inner connectivity, and this abduction from true self actually created shame within us, this guilt to be our true self. That's why we women especially, because we especially are trained, it's in our emotional DNA to be lost to ourselves. So we have shame now when we want to reclaim that true self. So this radical awakening that we need to go through is this epiphany that this true self is a stranger to us. And we've been looking for her or him through our food, through our lovers, through our children, through our beauty, through our body, and really this reclamation. Through our things, through our things, through the acquisition of our things. And yes. you know, oftentimes, as you state in the very beginning of Radical Awakening, it takes something major in your life to shake you up and wake you up because, you know, I just celebrated uh, 67 years going around the sun and I've been paying attention and listening all of these years to all the great people I've had the opportunity to speak to in all, so many different walks of life. And one of the thing that, things that I know is that the universe, the forces of life are always trying to guide you to your best self. That's why you're here. And when you don't pay attention, when you allow that authentic self to be smothered, to be covered, to be shown in other ways, to, to, to behave the way other people want you to, it is constantly, the forces of life are constantly, constantly, consistently trying to move you choice by choice in the direction of your best, truest self. And, and, and sometimes it takes a major self. accident. Sometimes it takes something tragic to happen in order to wake you up. That false self, I liken it to the shell of an egg. 
So it is going to keep cracking in order for the truth to emerge. So sometimes it takes this epiphany, this pain portal that we're in right now, this pandemic, to birth us into our authentic self, where we realize that in order to be the love we need, we need to endorse ourselves more than any other. We need to care about our intimate communion with our voice more than another's voice. Our approval of ourselves matters more than another's. And when we arrive at this place, this radically awakened awesome. place, now we are ready to embrace our sovereign truth. It takes so much undoing because culture's voice, our parents' shame, their guilt, their unmet dreams, their unmet expectations, that is the inner plague. And the real diet, the real uh, awakening comes when we change that inner tape and disrupt those patterns. Okay, you say that we must honor our worth by asking at least one question, and what is that question? Well, in every moment, we have to understand that we can align with who it is we truly are. So every choice can match how we truly feel. So we need to ask, does this, does this role, does this yes, does this no, does this choice match with how I truly wish to feel. And when we turn inward and keep checking in with our truth, with our voice, and let go of the false voices, now we begin to align with our authentic truth. Well, I know that for so many people uh, who are joining us today, you, 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 you make choices, because I did this for years, you make choices not based upon what you feel, you make choices based upon what you feel you have to do, this sense of responsibility, this sense of obligation. Um, so how, you know, I think that's a beautiful question, but not everybody is in a position of their life where, where they can just make choices that are in alignment with how they feel. I now do that, but it has taken me years to get to that point. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna hear you say this and now tomorrow, I'm just gonna make choices that are in alignment with exactly how I feel. Because we've been trained to do things on the outside. We've been trained to be attuned to the external voice. So what we are talking about today is a paradigm shift that we need to now stop the doing and stop the external craving and shift it around to the internal and the being. This is the paradigm shift. And yes, we have to go on a journey we have to reclaim that truth because we have so left that inner child on the sidewalks of our childhood in puddles of tears with broken teddy bears. So now this journey involves going back on this quest to reclaim who we left behind. But until we do this, Oprah, we will be foraging the earth for love and worth on the outside, from lovers to uh, Botox, to butt implants, mm. to, to careers, we'll be searching. But it's right here, and this is the paradigm shift that we I have know, to go I know. through. I know, the, 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 the Wizard of Oz, I mean, one of the greatest spiritual teachings, everybody's out here looking for the yellow brick roads in their life, and it's always, always right here in your own heart, in your own backyard. Now, I know you believe that by sharing, Dr. Swally, our stories, we collectively rise. So let's do that now by getting out our workbooks together and uh, learning where we are on our self-love scale. This is just a fun uh, assessment of how you think about yourself and the love you have for your own person. Today's workbook pages were included in the email that we sent you all when, we, when you uh, registered at www.com, Your Life in Focus. So you can still go there now to register and get your workbook, including all you folks watching on Facebook and YouTube. But if you don't wanna do that, we're also gonna put the pages up on the screen and you can either write down your answers at home or if you're on the Zoom, you can enter your answers at the prompts on your phone or laptop. And then Zoom is gonna tally our collective scores so that we can all find out how we're doing in loving ourselves, okay? Look at the top of your workbook. This is the love intention that I want you to remember as we move through this exercise. So the ability to give ourselves the love we need is the most valuable gift we'll ever receive. 
All love begins with the love we have for ourselves, showing ourselves loving kindness. When we get off track, like Jen said, be gentle with yourself. Tenderness in times of trouble, reverence in both moments of elation and uncertainty, help us to become stronger and ultimately healthier in all ways. This is how we're gonna score. First, number one is not me at all. Number two is sometimes me. And number three is often that's me. Number four is, ah, oh, that's me. Okay. Now, read through each question and select what most resembles you. And then we're gonna register that into the Zoom poll. Or you can just write it down on a piece of paper. Okay, remember, this is a check-in to give you an idea of where you are in this moment. Number one, I appreciate and accept myself at any point in my wellness journey. Is that not you at all? Is that sometimes you? Often that's me? Or number four, that's me, okay? I appreciate and accept myself at any point in my wellness journey. All right, number two, I have a self-care ritual that is important to me and I make time in my day to prioritize and practice it. Is that not you, sometimes you, often you, or that's you? Number three, when I get off track, overindulge, in a favorite food, hello potatoes, or a skip a workout, spend more money than my budget allows, I'm able to change course without a lot of negative self-talk. Is that you? Sometimes? Often? Not. Number four, when I'm alone, I rarely feel lonely. I am able to create joy for myself. Have a great party of one. Is that you? Sometimes, often, not. Number five, when uncertainty takes over, I practice patience, giving myself the time I need to understand the situation as best I can. Not me at all, sometimes me, often that's me, that's me. Okay? Don't forget to scroll down and hit submit at the end if you're doing this on Zoom. Now everybody add up your score. And we're gonna talk about what those scores mean. Okay, raise your hand if you scored a five to eight. Raise your hand, let me see you. Five to eight, anybody on here? Five, two, eight. Rebecca, did you raise your hand? Yeah, Rebecca, no, you did not raise your hand. Okay. Nobody scored five to eight. This is good. Oh, oh, George, did I see your hand there? Tell me what. Hi, George. There's George there in a burgundy sweater, it looks like, guys. Pull him up. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, yeah, I can hear you, George. Go ahead, we can all hear you. So, um, yeah, I scored an eight, which I was like going, maybe I could change one of my answers and get back above eight. But, but I didn't, I was honest with myself. And um, yeah, I, 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 I do well for the most part, and then when I do start to fail or start to go off track, I kind of go, just keep going, keep going. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. And, I'm gonna, and, I, and I let myself go worse. And then I feel worse about it. So it's kind of like a ritual, perpetual, perpetual thing. I go, if I, if I fail, I keep going until I feel worse. And then I feel totally terrible. But then usually the next day I can pick myself up again, but it's, what about, what, about I, I, that, what about that beautiful uh, uh, advice we just got from Jennifer Garner about, you know, being able yeah. to tell yourself, be gentle with yourself, George? Well, so, George, this is what your score and everybody else who scored five to eight, 
uh, says about you. It seems like there's an opportunity to actually show yourself more love, and this will help make it more likely to achieve what you want, replacing, as we've just said, negative self-talk with some kinder thoughts. Be gentle with yourself. Can begin to shift your mindset, help you feel just a little better in the morning moment, and that's all you need is a little and then a little more, and before you know it, your whole vibration has changed. So thank you so much, George, for being honest enough to share that. Uh, Eileen from Illinois scored also an eight and describes life right now as just spinning plates and says it feels impossible to put herself first. Tell us about that, Eileen. Hi, Oprah. Um, so, so during the pandemic, that's completely accurate. I feel like I'm doing nothing but constantly spinning plates between homeschooling, cooking, cleaning, bedtime, bath time, and most importantly to my children is the role of snack servant. And it's like Groundhog Day every day. Mm, snack servant. I love that term. So you managed to get everybody out for this morning. How'd you do that? Well, you'll be surprised how easy it is to find a babysitter when Oprah's involved. <laughs> that's the truth because i haven't had this in a long time so thank you oprah virtual high enjoy, five enjoy enjoy so dr shafali you say because you've heard uh, a, a bit of eileen's story our producer shared with you and you say that eileen is using control to keep herself distracted explain that i think eileen is overwhelmed like so many people yes and because she's spinning out of control on the inside. That's what we women do, especially as, as mothers, because we don't allow ourselves to honor what's going on on the inside. We get lost in the doing and the caregiving and the helicoptering and over-managing on the outside until the helicopter crashes to the ground. So Eileen was able to drop some of her plates this morning when she's coming on with Oprah. And this is a perfect symbol of how we give up ourselves because we don't think of ourselves as worthy. But she considered this moment with you worthy, so now she could drop some of those plates. So those spinning plates really are a sign and symbol of her inner world. You know, our outer world reflects the inner world. So the only way for Eileen to let go of this control that she's trying to manage everything and do it all perfectly, these are the masks we women wear over competency, over perfectionism, over doing, over achieving, over caretaking. Until we drop those masks, drop those roles, there will be no space for the real quest, the real mastery, which is the inner mastery of her inner world that is really spinning out of control. What do you want to say to that, Eileen? You know what? I feel there's a lot of valid points um, that there's so much going on. I almost feel like I'm constantly in turmoil because I'm I'm everything to this house, you know, the teacher, the cook, the cleaner. And I've always loved and appreciated teachers so much. Um, I really appreciate them more now than ever because I've taken on their position. And I know how hard they're working because doing anything in real life and then doing something on Zoom are two different things. Being in person is so much easier. And um, I wish I didn't have to have all this control that I have to have and all these, I didn't wish I didn't have to wear all these hats that I do, but I do. So I'm just trying to stay afloat during and survive and keep my kids healthy during a pandemic. And it's just really difficult right now. Life What's is never the one, as it is now. Uh, Dr. Shafali, um, and, and, and you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you, Eileen, is because you represent a world of other people. You are speaking, yeah. not, snap your fingers, nod your head. Is she not speaking for almost everybody here today? And, uh, you know, it's easy for, for, for anyone to say, um, you know, you need to start looking inward and you need to drop some of the things that you're doing. So how do we, how do you do it? Which is what I, one of the most important lessons I learned in the 25 years on the Oprah show is it how you begin to do that is the key because it's not going to happen all at one time. So Dr. Shafali, what is the one thing Eileen and every one of us listening today who feels some of that spinning can, can begin to do? 
Well, if there's one thing I need people to recognize is that this outer doing is a distraction that we have created in order to feel worthy. And if we don't get it, that it's not really that we have to be the perfect teacher. We have to be the perfect parent. Our children need to be fantastic students. It is not that. That is how we have fooled ourselves because this is how we were trained to get an identity for ourselves, to get love for ourselves. But your children to get need work. to eat. Your children need to eat. They need to eat, but if they can't eat gourmet food today, they cannot eat gourmet food. If the kid cannot get an A grade, they cannot get an A grade. We must first be sane and healthy on the inside. The achievement and the perfection has to go. That is a false way we have been trained to get love. And we're getting distracted. And this pandemic is telling us, hey, slow down, slow down. let it go. The world is not perfect the way you thought. You are not in control. Death is around the corner. Step into the now. And this is a wake-up call. And we must shed those old roles of overdoing and overachieving. Our children are suffering because of it, and we are suffering. So it's not We need a true. longer conversation. We need a longer conversation about this, because I, I know this for sure, that this pandemic is here to help us move forward into the light. And if we don't use this moment, the moment will be lost forever. And, you know, I, I hate to think of what, you know, what, what shows up next if we didn't listen to this. But Eileen, I just wanna say that what it took to get, I'm looking at, at your background and what it took to get your house this clean on a Saturday morning. May the Lord bless you for that. It's Thank you, Oprah. I mean, there isn't a speck or of nothing, really. Incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to our scores. Who scored a 9 to 12? Keep your hands up. Uh, okay, I see you, Jeannie. Jeannie, Jeannie, right there. 9 to 12? Hello? What, tell, me, tell me what's going on, Jeannie. That's Jenny Odd. It says Odd Jenny. Hi. me yeah yeah we hear you good yeah oh, i do hear hi. you okay <laughs> it's good happening where, 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 where are you zooming from uh stockton california oh good 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 hey yeah so nine to twelve it's probably yeah. easier for you to forgive others than it is to forgive yourself yet there's no reason uh, not to direct the same or more kindness and compassion your way what's going on in your life um, I find that I just, I give advice to my friends, but I can't take my own advice. Mm -hmm. And is... I've always been that way, but it's so hard to like, listen to what I want to say to people and hear it for myself. It's really difficult to get past that. And that's something mm -hmm. I have started working on. Uh, I finally reached out and started speaking to someone to get my mental health on track. So we've started talking about that and giving myself uh, positive enforcement to say, you know, yeah, you have struggled, but here are why you've succeeded and what you're good at, what, you, what you've done so far. It's okay that mistakes have happened, but, you know, you're moving forward and they are making you who you are. So it's okay. So to embrace those mistakes, but also learn from them. Well, the fact that you're here this morning and that you are self-aware enough to be able to express that means that you are obviously on the right track. So give yourself a big high five for that. Jenny, give yourself, <laughs> as we're gonna give you a big high five for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Patrice scored a nine and says that negative self-talk takes over when she gets off track. What's going on, Patrice? Hi, Oprah, hi, Dr. Shafali. Me supporting myself is really a work in progress. I try to be kind to myself, but then the negative self-talk and constantly comparing myself to others kicks in. To help fix that, in 2020, I made a vision board. On the vision board, I decided to focus on my career, losing weight, and finding a romantic partner. Then the vision board went completely out the window. I tried to stop the negative self-talk, continue with that, uh, continue with the vision board, but I just feel stuck. And I'm wondering, what should I do? Dr. Shafale. 
Well, you know, the thing about these vision boards is that it's gotten us all confused. So I think I want to challenge us all to create a completely revolutionary transformed vision board. Most of our vision boards are about who we want to be in the future. And because they are about who we want to be, it's about who we are not in the present. Right there are two big mistakes. One, it's future-based. Two, it's lack-based. Then we often put a perfect body on the vision board or a mansion or a Bentley. Again, we're focusing on objects, not feelings. So the external, the lack, and objects takes us further away from the present moment. So instead of the vision boards that you're creating and we have been trained to create, let's create a new daily vision board for the now. So these are the kinds of questions that we can begin asking instead of just pasting pretty looking shiny, shiny glossy things on the vision board. We can ask each day, who am I today? Am I being my truest self today? And what do I want more of in my life right now so that I can be more authentic? What do I not want more in my life right now so that I can be my truest self? What do I need to do now to arrive at a new inner state of being? And when we begin to focus on the being state in the moment, in the present, now we shift from craving and lack and the what if in the future to the now, to the abundant, to the plenitude, to the what is. It is a return to the present moment, Oprah. I mean, we have to train and retrain our mental muscle because we've been so conditioned to look out there. We need to now start pointing that finger to the inner state of alignment every single day. Yes, it's a moment by moment practice. So you, uh, I, I agree, and you said this at, at, at the very beginning too that you that that it was a it's, it's a daily journey and it's a daily it's a it's an ongoing process and it never stops. Uh, but do you not think that having long term goals? Are you saying that a person shouldn't have a long time long term goal or vision or idea about what they want to do in the future? They can, but it can be a trap because then you're just focused on something way out there and in the moment that doesn't match up. So I rather us shift the paradigm to let's start with the present moment. Is my current moment aligned? Expand that to the current home situation, to the current relationship, to the current career. Stay very tight and connected to who am I now and extricate eradicate all that I am not now. And as you begin saying no to the dysfunctional, to the toxic, to the unworthiness that we feel, to the shame, as we start letting that go and shedding that, now the true self emerges with power and might. And the true self begins to tell you, now go next to there, that place, now go there. It's a very intimate connection. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So what, what, what she's saying is that you want to be able to have uh, a, a, a vision for your future, but have every step that you take, every choice that you make in the now move you in the direction of that so that you're not, not focused on what's out there, but you're focused on what's happening in this moment. Uh, that, that's a great way to live, is to have the vision, but let every, every you agree? But Oprah, look at what this pandemic showed us. We were so ready to go to Tahiti and Bali and all these fancy places in 2020 in the summer. I know I was. And the pandemic showed us there is no future. There never was a future. There never will be a future. The only time zone we have is the present. So it has been the most marvelous wisdom teacher, albeit through pain, because we humans seem to be suckers for pain. Yeah. We only seem to really crack that egoic shell through pain. But look what it's taught us. There is no future. So I teach all my clients, ah, your thoughts are about the future and they're based in lack. These are the two things we do, future and lack. 
come back to the present. Where are we now? How do we clean up our life in the now? What do we take out in the now? And I'm telling you, when you reorient your life to the present moment, you not only emerge more sovereign, you also allow yourself to play with life. You know, when you get fixated on that outcome, on that four-year college, on that Ivy League education, on that skinny body, then you're not open to something that could happen like this pandemic. When we are open in the now, now we can play with the now. Now we can enjoy in the now. We're not just fixated on, oh, my future did not happen. We stop, we stop based, living based in the future. We must focus and expand our consciousness to the present. Yeah, the now, it, that, that's been the greatest, greatest, greatest teaching, most beneficial lesson I ever received is being able to just be in this present moment. And it's actually what's gotten me through the pandemic is just focusing on how I'm feeling right now, not what's gonna be a month from now or two months from now. None of us would have predicted that we'd be still in this situation uh, 11 months later. And uh, I've gotten through it just concentrating on the present moment. Is, is this helpful to you, Patrice? Has this been helpful? Yes, this has been extremely helpful and something I've actually been working on with uh, um, a counselor. So she's been trying to get me to see that, but the way you explained it really brought it home a little better. So thank you. Both. Okay, and you don't even have to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> no counseling fees here for me or Dr. Shafali. Okay, sure. thank you so much. Uh, bless you in the journey. Okay, back to scoring. How about a 13 to 17? That means 13 to 17, oh, that makes sense. All of y'all on here. Hello, Alexandra up there, which are 15. Uh, Self-love is definitely part of your personal uh, toolkit, means you use it often. Hello, I see you, Jamie. Uh, but there are those moments where more self-acceptance without judgment could work well for you. Think about what helps you, show your self-love, identify ways to bring that into life in tough moments, okay? That means y'all are doing really okay. 13 to 17, really doing okay on the journey? Of course you would be. That's why you're up here on a Saturday morning. Okay, who got 18 to 20? Hands clapping because you're giving yourself the love that you need. I see you, Joyce. Very good, very good. By regularly practicing acceptance of and kindness towards yourself, uh, you have lots of space to take in love, be the best version of yourself. Jocelyn, was that you too? You scored 18 to 20? Jocelyn in red? Nope, okay. 19, I see there, Coach Brooks. Coach Brooks, you need to score 19, you're a coach, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, fantastic, guys. Okay, let's see how everyone did as a whole. 5% on Zoom, we're five to eight. That means, of course, because if you're, if you're on this Zoom, it means you're moving in the direction of giving yourself the love you need. Um, those of you who are five to eight, we're happy to have you here because it means more self-love is needed. 29% scored nine to 12, 47% were in the 13 to 17 range and 19% were 18 to 20. That's our self-love success story for this morning. Dr. Shafali, I can't, you, you know, I could talk to you forever. I can't wait to talk to you on Super Soul about your book, Radical Awakening. I think the world needs to know um, and needs to hear what you have to say. Again, I say Conscious Parenting, best book ever for anybody who's having a baby, has children. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank, thank you all, thank you. Radical Awakening coming coming soon. You can pre-order it at a radicalawakening.com. I've read it and I gotta tell you, life enhancing. One of those books that you'll end up keeping on your nightstand and wanna refer to over and over. Read